Now, engineers decommissioning the crippled nuclear plant in northeastern Japan face many challenges. Radiation levels inside the reactor containment vessels of Kushima Daiichi remains too high for anyone to enter. So robots are being used to get the work done. This edition of Nuclear Watch focuses on the high-tech machines being developed for the cleanup. A new robot was introduced at Fukushima Daiichi in March to inspect one of the damaged reactor buildings. Its task was to collect information on the current levels of contamination. Engineers maneuvered the robot remotely from a chamber 100 meters away using images sent from the high-tech machine. The robot is called Meister. It collects concrete samples for analysis. Meister was sent to the top floor of the building, but piles of rubble obstructed its way. So the engineers sent in another robot named Warrior to help. Its job was to clear a path for Meister. But a mishap forced the engineers to change their plans. Meister's camera caught what happened. Warrior overturned, rendering the machine useless. So Meister could only collect samples from an area where it could move. Now, engineers still face their hardest challenge at the nuclear plant. They have to deal with the inside of the reactor containment vessels. Kenichiro Okamoto explains. During the accident in 2011, nuclear fuel melted down in three reactor containment vessels. Highly toxic fuel debris remains inside the vessels. The cleanup process will not be complete until all of the debris is removed. The most difficult tasks engineers face in the cleanup is how to build an accurate picture of the conditions inside the vessels. We certainly have a difficult path ahead. I think we'll be able to move forward if we can find out where the debris is and what the current conditions are. Engineers say a robotic probe is the only way to collect information on the fuel debris. They have discovered that robots could be inserted through a tube that penetrates the vessels. The opening measures only about 10 centimeters in diameter. Now engineers are developing a special robot that can go through that hole. Satoshi Okada and his team are developing this snake-like robot. It can change its form after it passes through a narrow opening. It will then take pictures of the inside of the containment vessels with its camera. We hope to learn about the conditions inside the reactor containment vessels as soon as possible so that we can start investigating the debris. We desperately want to move up the schedule for the cleanup. The engineers want to start using this device by the end of the year. They are not yet sure how high levels of radiation or humidity inside the vessels could affect the robot. They say development of these machines is trial and error. Kenichiro Okamoto, NHK World. At Fukushima Daiichi have been trying to deal with contaminated water that builds up by the ton each day. But they've been struggling with one setback after another. The operator of the nuclear plant says if workers have turned off the last functioning line in a water treatment device called the Advanced Liquid Processing System. It's designed to filter out radioactive substances.
Tokyo Electric Power Company says workers noticed that water due to be treated contained too much calcium. Calcium makes it more difficult to remove radioactive substances from the water, so it needs to be eliminated before treatment. The utility suspects there may be a problem with the filter that removes calcium and metals. Workers ran into a similar problem on Saturday and shut down another line, and they halted the third line in March because of a defective filter. Workers have since replaced that filter and cleaned the equipment. They hope to restart the line at the end of the month. About 400 tons of groundwater flow into damaged reactor buildings each day and becomes contaminated. TEPCO had initially hoped that all three lines of the water treatment system would become fully operational in April. But the latest delay raises doubts about when the system will function smoothly. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant has started releasing groundwater into the sea. The water flows from mountains around the plant. Workers have been pumping it into storage containers before it reaches contaminated areas. TEPCO expects this release will reduce the amount of contaminated water that continues to accumulate at the plant. NHK World's Noriko Okada reports. A total of 560 tons of groundwater pumped from the grounds of Fukushima Daiichi was released through pipes and into the sea. Government officials and the plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, conducted surveys of the groundwater prior to the release. They say the radiation levels were far below government safety standards. About 400 tons of groundwater flows into the building and becomes contaminated every day. Engineers have built a system to pump up fresh groundwater through wells before it reaches the damaged reactor units. They store the water in tanks to check the level of radiation and release it into the sea only if it's not contaminated. <laughs> Fishermen from a nearby coastal community approve the release. But some are uneasy about the plan, as they fear it may impact fishing in the area. We want them to make sure they don't release contaminated water. Government officials say they will constantly monitor the safety of the water. Our duty is to supervise this operation. We will do all we can to dispel the concerns fishermen and people have in Fukushima. TEPCO officials admit this operation cannot be the main solution to stop the build-up of contaminated water. They estimate only about a quarter of the contaminated water accumulating every day can be reduced. Engineers at the site still have to pump up large amounts of contaminated water and keep it in storage tanks. The plant's operator has also been looking at other solutions. They are examining a plan to create an ice barrier around the damaged reactor buildings to prevent the groundwater from flowing in. They've also started to clean up contaminated water already stored in nearly 1,000 tanks around the facility. But the water treatment system has been repeatedly suspended due to technical problems. Managers at the crippled plant say they plan to release the groundwater once a week for the time being.
Across Japan, 18 idle nuclear reactors need safety checks before they can be restarted. The operator of a plant in the eastern prefecture of Ibaraki is the latest to join the waiting list. An executive of the Japan Atomic Power Company submitted an application to the Nuclear Regulation Authority to have the Tokai No. 2 plant tested. He says they have upgraded measures to withstand a possible earthquake 50% stronger than previous projections. The company is also building an 18-meter embankment to hold back tsunami. However, the utility faces many obstacles to resuming operations. The plant began operations in 1978, making it the oldest of the reactors awaiting screening. Nearby municipalities must also devise evacuation plans for the 1 million people living within a 30-kilometer radius of the plant. That's the largest number of potential evacuees among all the nuclear plants in the country. Tokai Village, where the plant is located, and 10 other local governments gave approval for the application last week. But they say applying for screening and resuming operations are separate well, issues. The plan to restart two reactors at the nuclear plant in central Japan have won a victory. A Japanese court says safety measures at the plant are insufficient, and it's ordered the operator to keep the reactors offline. This is the first ruling against the restart of a nuclear plant since the accident at Fukushima Daiichi three years ago. The two reactors at the OE nuclear plant in Fukui Prefecture were shut down in September for regular inspections. Residents and their supporters had filed a lawsuit asking for the reactors to be kept offline. They argued that they were not designed to withstand huge earthquakes. The plant's operator, Kansai Electric Power Company, insists the facility is safe. The Fukui District Court upheld the claims of 166 plaintiffs living within the 250-kilometer radius of the plant. The presiding judge said the utility's estimates for possible maximum tremors are overly optimistic and unreliable. He said the cooling systems of the reactors could fail to function in an earthquake. Officials of Kansai Electric say they will appeal the ruling. The court's decision could have an impact on discussions about whether to resume nuclear power generation. All 48 of Japan's commercial reactors are currently offline. Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority is screening safety measures at several plants to determine whether they can be restarted. I have no comment on court rulings. We continue to conduct safety screenings in accordance with our own policy. Japanese courts have historically ruled in favor of power utilities. Most lawsuits filed since the late 1960s by residents hoping to hold nuclear facilities have been dismissed. Plaintiffs in two cases have their claims upheld regarding the Shika nuclear plant in Ishika Prefecture and a Monju fast breeder reactor in Fukui Prefecture. But higher courts later overturned the rulings. A group that opposes nuclear power generation says about 30 cases are presently before courts against 16 nuclear facilities. Japan's top Japan. government spokesperson has distanced the administration from the court's ruling. Can you, uh... The government is not a party to the lawsuit. I will decline to comment on the ruling. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshihide Suga added the administration's policy to restart the country's nuclear plants will not change. He said the government is waiting for the results of a number of ongoing NRA screenings. The decision to resume operation at nuclear plants should not be in the least arbitrary or involve government interests, but instead be made objectively with safety a priority. Suga said the NRA's safety standards are said to be the toughest in the world. The author of a controversial Japanese comic has released his latest storyline. The long-running manga has been criticized for the way it depicts radiation contamination from Fukushima's nuclear accident. In the latest edition, the author responded to criticism by saying the scenes were intended to raise important questions. NHK World's Noriko Okada reports. Oishinbo has sold 120 million copies since its first publication in 1983. 
but recently it has attracted fierce controversy. It was triggered by this scene. The main characters are suffering nosebleeds after visiting the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. And a former mayor of a village near the crippled plant says the nosebleeds are due to radiation exposure. It also depicts a local expert saying that it's impossible to make the prefecture habitable. The portrayal angered people who thought the storyline could lead to discrimination. The governor of Fukushima made clear his feelings on the content. It's totally unacceptable. The storyline as a whole gives the wrong impression of Fukushima and may give us an unfair reputation. Cabinet members also criticized the story, saying it is scientifically baseless and fuels rumors. The author responded by saying that the story is based on information he gathered during two years of research in Fukushima. He says the future of Fukushima is the future of Japan. The editor of the magazine says his intention was to raise questions about radioactive substances and low dosage radiation. Fukushima residents say they are uneasy about the content. It said we should be courageous enough to escape, but where can we go? It's a very sensitive issue. I wish they had expressed it more thoughtfully. An American professor who studies Japanese literature also sees a number of problems in the narrative, such as describing Fukushima as a whole despite the regional differences in levels of radiation. But Robert Campbell says the author had a point. We who live on the outside of that, and perhaps in our hearts want to support people who live there, um, need to be a little more literate, perhaps be a little more active, spend a little more time looking between the crevices to see what's actually going on there. He gave us a chance to look in between the cracks and to see part of what's actually going on uh, in Fukushima. The magazine editor said that the latest installment of Oishimbo has concluded and will not appear in the magazine for a while. But the difficulty and uncertainty for the people of Fukushima will continue. Managers at many Japanese companies can't find enough people to hire. Officials at Japan's labor ministry are now looking at expanding a program that helps firms solve staff shortages. They say low wages and difficulty in taking time off are causing more and more workers to give up their jobs. Restaurants and medical facilities, for example, find it hard to attract employees. Analysts fear the problem could get worse as the job market recovers. That makes it easier for workers to be picky about what jobs they choose. Ministry officials are considering boosting subsidies for companies that want to improve pay and other working conditions. Leaders have been hoping exports will pick up a bit of momentum, but things are not going as they wanted. They've just found out the trade balance is in a deficit for the 22nd month in a row. Now, finance minister officials say the deficit for April was $8 billion. That's down 7.8 percent from a year ago. Exports surged more than 5% in yen terms. Automakers shipped more cars to Europe. And people in the telecom industry shipped more products to China, including LCD panels for smartphones. Imports rose 3.4%, but that was slower than in March. Some analysts say the increase in the consumption tax dragged down imports. Japanese leaders have laid out ambitious plans to turn the economy around. But they're having a tough time getting trade to flow in the direction they want. Ai Uchida joins us now from the business desk. Tell us more, Ai. Well, Catherine, Japanese leaders are uh, facing uh, some challenges that none of their predecessors have had to deal with. The Fukushima nuclear accident has forced utilities to import fuel to power homes and businesses, and that's helping keep the trade balance in the red. In fact, Japan has been in a trade deficit for 22 months straight. Finance ministry officials say the deficit for April was about $8 billion. That's down 7.8 percent from a year ago. Exports surged more than 5 percent in yen terms. Automakers shipped more cars to Europe, and people in the telecom industry shipped more products to China, including LCD panels for smartphones. 
Imports rose 3.4 percent, but that was slower than in March. Some analysts say the increase in the consumption tax last month dragged Senior down. Members imports. of Japan's ruling coalition are to discuss collective self-defense. Party officials will examine a report that calls for a reinterpretation of the country's constitution. It would enable Japan to come to the defense of a country it has a close relationship with that is under military attack. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe received the report from a panel of experts last week. He said he is in favor of allowing for collective self-defense under certain conditions. Members of Abe's Liberal Democratic Party and coalition partner New Kometo will examine the matter and other defense issues. They're expected to begin by examining how Japan should respond to incidents that are not immediately recognizable as an armed attack. They hope to lay out means of dealing with possible scenarios, such as an armed group pretending to be fishermen landing on one of Japan's remote islands. Officials will also discuss a legal framework to allow Japanese self-defense forces on UN peacekeeping missions to use weapons if UN personnel come under attack. The Japanese government has traditionally interpreted the constitution as barring Japan from engaging in collective self-defense. Coalition officials will exchange views on whether this should be altered. LDP Vice President Masahiko Komura says he wants the cabinet to decide on the constitutional issue before officials from Japan and the U.S. start discussing defense guidelines later this year. New Komeito Secretary General Yoshihisa Inoue says that the inter-party discussion will be challenging. If the interpretation of the Constitution is changed every time a new government comes in, it could undermine legal consistency. We really need a thorough discussion. LDP officials plan to present various scenarios in their effort to convince new Komeito members of the need for collective self-defense. Incidents that might arise include Japan assisting U.S. naval vessels in the event of an emergency on the Korean Peninsula. of searching U.S. authorities say they have finally pinpointed the source of a radiation leak at a waste disposal site. The accidents in the state of New Mexico in February exposed dozens of workers to radiation. Officials with the U.S. Department of Energy say the leak was found in a damaged holding container. It occurred in a facility 660 meters below ground. 22 employees on the surface were exposed to low-level radiation. Photographs released by the authorities show the container had a cracked lid and that there was evidence of heat damage. The repository is a final disposal site for nuclear waste, including soil and equipment contaminated during the production of nuclear weapons. It has been accepting waste from national research organizations around the country since it became operational in 1999. The department says the damage was found on one of the containers brought from the Los Alamos National Laboratory, also in New Mexico. It says it will investigate how the damage occurred and examine other containers for any damage. It is expected to be at least three years before the facility resumes full operation. up anywhere this time of year, especially at the Idaho National Lab's desert site. Local News 8's Bree Clark took a trip out there today, and Bree, they're doing a lot of things to repair for the season, and uh, you got kind of up close and personal with their training efforts, didn't you? Jay, I got just close enough. You know, they brought off their heavy machinery for mowing and high-pressure hoses, so I, I didn't get too close. But this training is just one part to make sure the INL and surrounding counties stay safe. If you look around us, Pretty much everything we have is in the wildlands. And wildlands mean fuel for fires. They go real fast out here. And fast can mean fire spreading beyond INL lines to other counties. So the team has to bring out the big guns. Anything from high shooting water 
into a pool of more than 16,000 gallons of it. But more important than all this H2O is getting rid of fire fuel. I'm around your house at home. You're worried about keeping the fuels away and your ladder fuels away from your structure, so it's got a good chance to survive a fire. It's pretty much the same thing that we're doing out here at the lab. And with seven years with the department and more than 20 working for the INL, Chief Eric Gosswiller has seen his share of fires, especially the Jefferson Blaze back in 2010. It was a very difficult fire, especially during the first operating period. The fire stretched from the INL all the way to I-15 in less than four hours. Well, that thing was moving so fast, there's no way you could get anybody safely out in front of that. So. And they wouldn't have been able to put out the fire at all without the help of county and city fire officials, which is why communication and partnership partnership is key to this whole operation. It's a great team to work with. They're passionate about what they do. Um, I think that's typical of the fire service as a whole. And the department says some of the fastest fires have reached speeds ranging, ranging from 10 to 25 miles per hour. Live in the studio, Amber Clark. Thanks, Bree. The INL experienced a little snowpack this past winter, so they are definitely expecting a busy fire season in the area. After Chernobyl, we finally hear All kinds of cancer went up the next year Hard to interpret, says OPCS Can't understand it, well here is a guess Low-level isotopes from the Ukraine Drifted to Wales on the wind and the rain Rainfall is higher in Bangor than Kent Cancer in Wales is up 30% we're breathing strontium, locking it into the structure of cellular DNA And each beta decay in an occasional, rather mutational way Kills us, even new labor can see what it means Radioisotopes alter your genes Ghosts of dead babies will give them no rest Till the dosimetry's been reassessed Wombling, strombling, banker to Kent Telling the news of the second event Telling the story all and two scenes A radioisotopes alter your genes Nuclear establishment, castle of lies Children are dying in front of your eyes Born with no limbs, with two heads or no brain Born to a life of incurable pain Nuclear subsidies victims will pay While you take a pension and tiptoe away Don't reassure us cause we always knew Yours was a story too slick to be true Well, breathing strontium Locking it into the structure of cellular DNA And each a beat of decay in an occasional, rather mutational way Kills us Nobody's hiding these nuclear crooks Government stooges aren't cooking the books Only the mothers are guilty of crimes Bearing their children in nuclear times Radioisotopes float around free Up in the atmosphere, up near the sea So many diseases genetically linked Strontium wombles will soon be extinct Cause we're breathing strontium Locking it into the structure of cellular DNA And each beat of decay In an occasional, rather mutational way You set the spark, you stoke the fire, and then you act surprised When the flames go up, when the barn comes down right there before your eyes Oh, the tools that you manipulate are more powerful each day And they will overcome you, they'll crush you and take from you All the marrow and the sinew of your ideology But don't get upset, don't be like that it's your own damn fault That your flock is ready to fight It is too late To turn around Turn them all to salt No, your monsters come to life Oh Well, rocks are thrown and voices used To tear down the innocent 
People will die with ideas cast in rebar stoked cement. Oh, the words you shout has moved the herd to break free from their cage, to drop bombs on all the weaklings, retching, melting, reeking of the forfeit, tired teachings of your ideology. But don't get upset, you can't be like that. Cause it's your damn fault That your flock is ready to fight It is too late To turn around To turn them all to soul No, your monsters come to life Oh, don't get upset Don't be like that It's your own damn fault yeah, that your flock is ready to fight It is too late To turn around To turn them all to soul No, your monsters come to life Whoa, whoa It's come to life Negotiators from Iran and six world powers are pushing to reach a final agreement on the Iranian nuclear program with a deadline looming. They have until July, but Iranian officials say they're still far apart on seven major issues. The Iranians insist they need to develop enough nuclear fuel to drive power plants and nuclear-powered ships. They process uranium at two enrichment plants. They want to increase the number of centrifuges from 20,000 units to 90,000. Negotiators for the six powers want the number reduced to 5,000. And they've rejected the Iranians' proposal to use a new generation of centrifuge. The latest technology is said to be several times more productive. The two sides are also caught up on a heavy water reactor under construction near the western city of Iraq. The Iranians have offered to change the design so the facility would only extract a fifth of the amount of plutonium they had been planning for. The six powers are opposed to the reactor even being built. The negotiators plan to hold a final round of talks next month in Vienna. Their deadline is July 20 and their discussions are expected to be difficult. Oh yeah, go on, click the subscribe button. Uh, we need to get subscribe and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the remix button, hit the remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.